Alrighty, and welcome back to another episode of the Crypto Chronicle. In 2024, it is March the 26th. We are, say, 24 days out from the halving. Yeah, close enough. It's April 19th, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, so uh, it'll get it'll get quicker. Yeah, so yeah, the day varies a fair bit. Yeah, eight, okay. Yeah. Um, well, there's a fair bit to get through. It's been actually a quite wild week in terms of price action, hasn't it? Since we last uh, touched base, I can't actually remember the exact pricing last week, but I reckon we've had a pump and dump, sorry, a dump and then pump. Yeah, it's sort of. Good. I think I think we actually were yeah. seeing just the start of that bleed. Yeah. Okay. Yep. Yeah. Um, Consolidating. Now we've gone back, which is good. Yeah. Yeah. Close-ish. So obviously, for those that don't know, uh, last week, yeah, we we're probably around that sixty. I think we're at that sixty nine thousand dollar mark, weren't we? Around that prior ath level, mm. and then we dumped to about sixty thousand eight hundred. I think was the low. Um, the the lowest yep. of the lows. Um, we repumped after that, came back down, repumped again. Um, but it's been really good to see. Obviously, I think it's been a big week of grayscale outflows. Mm. Um, the SEC attacked ETH a bit, which we saw, which we'll speak on. Meh. Meh. Um, and some other stuff. But we might as well get into it. And of course, we will start with our great BlackRock and everything to do with them, given this podcast is dedicated to, <laughs> to it somewhat. But uh, for those, I think most people will know that they saw BlackRock initiate uh, the tokenization uh, of RWA mm. or of reward assets uh, through the debut of their digital liquidity fund. Yeah. Um, so for those that don't know, I'm pretty sure anyone that's listened to this podcast know who BlackRock are. They obviously have their own iBit ETF in Bitcoin. Um, but the cool thing about them is like, I think my expectations were that they'd all just focus on Bitcoin for a while at least. Kind you'd, of, you'd think that would be yeah, the natural thing, but it seems yeah. as though the snowball effect is becoming a real thing. Yeah, it is. It is. Um, and, you know, I think the snowball effect everyone wants to see is when, uh, if ETH gets approved, what yeah. <laughs> what the kind of snowball effect will be there, mm. whether there'll be sol ones or link ones and or kind of... God. <laughs> kind of those joint ones you can do. Imagine, like, where does that line get drawn? Though that's going to be the thing. I guess by the SEC, doesn't it? I know. Um, but I, yeah, because you know, in their eyes, a lot of these are securities, and obviously, F is now in their eyes. But, um, anyways, uh, you know, I think what's cool about it is the, the coolest part isn't about what coin it's specifically going to or what not like that i think it's more so just their belief in the technology and blockchain mm. yeah whereas i think at, at the start if you saw them with bitcoin and stuff you probably my initial thoughts were they well they just want to make the money right they see where the money is which is true um but i think now they've come around to a real understanding of the utilization of blockchain technology yeah. and what it can do i think yeah. that's why they want to get into eth i think it's why they want to create this rwa fund mm. um so they can leverage the technology um and then streamline their own processes yeah, exactly. um you know, I think enough people that kind of read into blockchain, they kind of make that shift from going, oh, it's useless to, oh, I can actually see how it looks in the real world. Um, and seemingly BlackRock and those companies are cluing on a bit. So Yeah, definitely. Um, that's good. But moving on to, uh, well, Van Eck, and I think, I don't have it down here, but Grayscale's futures ETH ETF got denied. Well, sorry, delayed. Yeah. Uh, Van Eck's spot Ethereum ETF has been uh, extended the deadline as well. So what are we expecting? Is it still that May? Yeah, so it's still that yeah. May 23 deadline. Um, and, you know, I think everyone's a bit shaky on this now. I think Eric, the great Eric, had it at 75%, but maybe I saw someone talking about 35%. I don't know how they derive these numbers, but... Um, yeah, there's all, it's all a bit messy at the moment, Ethereum, isn't it? Because <laughs> they brought out the Denkin upgrade, which mm. will, which obviously reduced transaction costs for layer twos. It wasn't so focused on the main net itself. But mm. um, so that was great news and everyone was looking forward to that. And then <laughs> just out of the blue, obviously, when, when things are flying, Gary and the SEC come out and they want to classify it as a security. Didn't, didn't we have the same thing about a month and a bit out from the BTC? Probably. You know what I mean? That pullback of like, oh, we're not really sure. Yeah, yeah. It happens. Um, like the, the Ethereum price action we should speak on as well, which was just a classic the last two weeks. It was yeah. like a, <laughs> you couldn't have gotten a more typical tinfoil hat conspiracy playbook that F is at, you know, 4,100. You see it like awkwardly getting sold Stumble. off more yeah. than dumping more than other. Then all this... SEC news comes out, it dumps like all the way to 3000 or like $3,000 yeah. and then it's instantly brought back up to 3500 It was actually beautiful because I won't uh, lie, uh, I remember looking at it and it was uh, like that 41 and I went, 
God, I wish I bought more. Yeah. <laughs> and, and then, damn, did I. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So um, I think the, the smarter mm. investors use that as an opportunity. Um, and maybe it was the smarter investors that were, you know, manipulating the price as such. I'm not going to say BlackRock was the one that was planning all of this. Point fingers. We're watching you, Larry. Yeah, Gary. Um, and... Yeah, I think, yeah, it was classic. And I think it's back at 3,600 now, 3,700, yeah. yeah, yeah. Right, yeah. Um, at least this morning it was. So, um, you know, I'm still, you know, I think I've said it a few times on this podcast and I say it a lot to our members when speaking about the FETF approval. And it's just if BlackRock's there, I'm confident. It doesn't matter what comes mm. out their way in terms of, I mean, SEC took Grayscale to court over the ETF, failed. Uh, SEC took Ripple to court, classifying XRP as a security, failed. Um, I don't think unless the uh, evidence or burden of proof they have on this Ethereum foundation is huge, then, you know, I'm not so sure that the SEC is going to succeed here. Um, no such thing as a fire if or you are a fire extinguisher. So yeah. Let's be honest. Yeah. Enough money to throw yeah. it. It doesn't matter. I agree. I agree. Um, but... Yeah, I think the general kind of consensus here is what they usually say. You know, senators and Gary are coming out and saying, you know, F is got so much risks for retail investors, blah, 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 blah. Mm. Um, no one cares, Gary. Mm. No one cares. But um, moving on into a more positive light, uh, yes, they did have the Denkin upgrade. It went successfully. We spoke about it a couple of times on the podcast. Um, it was fair essentially, Denkin. what? It was fair dinkum good, though. <laughs> fair dinkum good. <laughs> yes, it was. Um, so, obviously, we all know Ethereum's great scaling challenges. Uh, <laughs> as a tech, a lot of us probably don't like it, um, but that's what Arbitrum, Optimism, Polygon, and all these layer twos are there for. And essentially what this upgrade has done is, even though gas on those changes is quite cheap, it's become even cheaper. So, mm. um, yeah, if you go and try and use a chain like Arbitrum or Optimism now, I think if you go and use it, use the gas, and then compare it to gas used in the past, it'll be a fair bit cheaper. Um, Which is ironic, right? They've upgraded their own system to make layer twos cheaper. Yeah, but I mean, like it's good one. because most people that have a sound understanding Understanding of investing in Ethereum obviously expose themselves to layer mm. twos like yeah. we do in the Trading Academy. Um, in the Trading Academy, I think we hold two being mm. Arbitrum and Polygon um, as our main two layer twos to Ethereum. Uh, Polygon, we invested a, a, a long while ago. Arbitrum um, was obviously given it only came out in, I think, exactly a year ago, March yeah. of 2023. Um, but we've been accumulating that actually as a fairly big play in the bear market. Um, and yeah, it's just it's good to see that, you know, these low twos. And as I said, like, if you're a smart investor, you're exposed to these. And when an upgrade like this comes and you're like, oh, it's not that good for F, go and look at the volumes yeah, of exactly, Arbitrum yeah. and Optimism and you'll see how much the volume has increased just from that upgrade. Yeah, exactly. Um, and when you when investors go to invest in layer twos in a bull market they'll be looking at tvl volume yeah. which one has the cheapest gas so as long as you land on one that's achieving that such as an arbitrum optimism is another one mm. um i think you'll you'll succeed in investing quite well yeah definitely do your own research not financial advice of course um so you know i think whilst the challenges remain there for earth um, as a for gas fees itself, yeah. um, you know it's obviously good to see the layer two shining, and we've obviously got the base ecosystem that's just come out, mm. um, which is making you know the layer two race a whole lot hotter. Um, obviously, for those that don't know, layer two base is layer two to F, but it's you know pushed by Coinbase. Mm. Um, I think we'll speak about base in a different podcast, but you know, given Coinbase is the most used crypto app in the peak of a bull market, you know, it goes into the top five, top yeah, ten. Exactly, app, yeah. Um, you know, I think it would be wise to get exposed to base um, because when we, we call them normies, which is, you know, other people that don't invest in crypto, but when they come post all time highs, let's just say in June of 2024 and Bitcoin's at $100,000, they're going to download their, co their Coinbase app, maybe, oh, they're, they're going to download their first. Coinbase app and they're going to go to base and they're going to say, hey, there's Pepe the frog base. Don't buy that one though, but do you know what I mean? So if you can get exposed to base, I think you're going to be doing pretty well. That's a another non-financial advice tip. I was going to say, if you've gone all out there, I love it. Yeah, sorry. I'll just, yeah. You've gone a bit of a rant. I'm blushing slash really excited. <laughs> <laughs> We're not a bit of a rant, but yeah. um, 
just further news on the institutional front, um, there's actually two things. One thing I don't have here that I'll, I'll mention after, but Goldman Sachs are reporting that their hedge fund clients are re-entering crypto very strong this year. Um, this morning, we saw a gold miner from South America <laughs> Uh, kind of put out a plan to buy, what was it? It was like 20, 21 million 20, or something? No, it was, was like 1.4 billion. It was 20,000 oh, Bitcoin. Oh, 20,000 Bitcoin. That's yeah, what it was. Yeah, so I right. think it was like $2 billion worth of Bitcoin and they're doing it through. I, I looked up this company and they had a market cap of $4 million. Uh, I hold Solana shitcoins with a bigger market cap than that. So I'm not sure how they're going to achieve this, but... Mate, A plus for ingenuity. I feel Ingenuity. Like, like Peter Schiff was going to bed tonight and like saw that piece of news and just started like... Pulsating convulsing. and yeah, yeah. convulsing and just vomiting everywhere, like seeing his beloved gold miners and how trying to invest in Bitcoin. <laughs> um, uh. Poor Peter. But um, yeah, I think, you know, the main point I'm trying to push here is, you know, Goldman Sachs, if a lot of their clients are getting into it, Black Rocks are seeing more institutions, you'll slowly see this happen more and more and more. And you know what? It only makes Michael Saylor look a bit smarter. Because they're copying his playbook. That, that mm. minor one, if you read more into the story, I'll actually do an article on it after and I'll post it in the written chronicle for you to read. But, you know, it's part of that, you know, share plan buyback type of thing mm. where you um, <clears throat> do that and then raise money, buy Bitcoin. Yeah. Surprise more companies don't do it. But, hey. It's got to be hard. <laughs> <laughs> Probably not the easiest thing to do and a bit no. risky, but hey. Especially in Aussie. Yep. Um, so ASIC as well in Australia for a bit of Australian news is finalising uh, reforms for the cryptocurrency sector. I was actually at dinner with my mother last night. Good boy. <laughs> and yes. I can't see her on Easter, so I thought I'd, you know. Ballad. Yeah. Um, and I actually can't remember how me and her, her and I got on this, um, this conversation, but we were talking about uh, and I think we've spoken about it on this podcast is how poor we are as a nation with uh, yeah. tech reform and innovation. I think yeah. I had that statistic. We were like 63rd out of 64 developed nations in tech yeah. innovation and regulation. Um, but, you know, it's finally good to see that they're kind of getting some reforms for our sector and kind of, I think they're trying to balance consumer protection, market integrity, and obviously innovation. Probably yeah. a pretty tough thing to do because you want to protect everyone, which I think they do it in a wrong sense. A lot of governments, um, you know, the, well, the these examples for Australia, you know, Combank and ANZ and mm. stuff, not allowing you to spend your money anywhere. And in their mind, it's saying we're trying to stop you from losing your money, but, you know, that's not really financial it's freedom. liquidity fighting, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. And then, um, so, you know, it is somewhat good, but I think it's hard to balance. But mm. hopefully, you know, when they kind of release this, the full proposals, I think hopefully the frameworks and stuff are good. Um, and yeah. No one's too unhappy. Uh, I think we'll still be unhappy because I think we're still going to limit everything. <laughs> yeah, probably. Known to man. I'd love to see what the inflows versus outflows of something like ANZ is yeah. when the market goes up and down. Yeah. Well, I, like, it happened to me. I um, was at home and I didn't have access to mm. my wallets here at work and I wanted to quickly just do something. And I think I deposited 400 AUD mm. to coin, uh, coin stash. Yeah, um, coin stash. Yeah. Um, I think it was my first time ever depositing your second time ever depositing your coin stash mm. um and first time worked second time like did it hadn't showed up in the account next day wasn't there so i got to the third morning and i and i called anz and they your said patient. oh yeah they're like oh you've got to call this number and this number and this number you know, half an hour of holding, blah, blah, and I finally get on. And yeah, it's the guy saying, oh, well, our blocking of payments and where we hold it in the fraudulent department is based on trends. So if we see like, you know, a trend that so everyone's depositing to crypto, we'll just automatically block those payments. And it will be like that. And then we have to confirm with the person over the phone that they know what they're doing and stuff. And I was just, I was shocked by it. Like I was... Isn't the whole point of this 2FA stuff? Um, Isn't that the whole reason why it's like you've got ANZ and you're like, I confirm my identity yeah, know, stuff? Yeah. Like, what no. the... Yeah, exactly. Yeah, it's true. Yeah. I think, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I just hate banks. <laughs> yeah. I think their Giant idea nuts. is we don't want your money leaving our system to their system. Well, it's because how are they meant to give out a loan if they've got nothing there? Yeah. That's the point. Well, they won't give you a fucking loan if you've got oh, crypto yeah. in it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. But you know, the number one meaning yeah, yeah. is like, how are they meant to give out Johnny his bloody million dollar mortgage yeah. when they don't even have the million because all of us are putting our money in crypto? Like, yeah. it's just that liquidity yeah. sharing aspect. Yeah. And I think we know, obviously, we've spoken about it in the past about Westpac struggling and mm. it's all this sus stuff where they're like, you know, you got a thousand dollar withdrawal limit. It's like, how much liquidity do you really have to yeah. impose that? Like, um, you know what you need to do is get that banker on here. True. 
We should, should find someone who's like actually got more than one brain cell that works for them. <laughs> and then we should ask them to come on and have a chat to us about it. A suit. We'll get a suit in. Oh, a suit. God. Um, but, uh, you know, let's hope that wraps up and we finally got some clear regulations. Um, I think that'll be good for everyone. But mm. uh, another piece of news in the Australasia. Uh, ANZ and Chainlink Labs have unveiled outcomes. So I think we, uh, mm. you know, I've done articles in the past on ANZ and Chainlink and their link up for Oracles and CCIP. Um, so what they did was they got together with Avalanche um, and they're working on on-chain settlement solutions. Um, so obviously for those that don't know CCIP, it's the cross-chain interoperability protocol. Um, and so ANZ's kind of adopted this to show seamless access trading and the settlement of tokenized assets, you know, across various networks and currencies. Once again, it's this ironic thing where ANZ will limit me to ten thousand dollars per month in crypto. If I block my payments to it, they'll say this, that, and that. And here they are utilizing our own technology. Chainlink is a, a coin we hold a lot of in the trading academy, and here they are utilizing it. And what if I wanted to buy fucking Chainlink? Like, what if I wanted to? You know, should call them up. Like, can I go in with you guys? <laughs> like, it's, it's just a stupid thing behind yeah. it. It's just, it's just. Yeah. 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 So essentially what this thing is, it's based off a delivery versus payment or DVP principle. Um, it's about acquiring tokenized assets once again uh, on Ethereum and settling the transactions on Avalanche. Um, so it's cool to see ANZ's utilis- utilization of this anyway. So um, do that? Yeah. Well, I, I, once again, I hate the banks, but, you know, we're just going to see the convergence of more traditional finance institutions like ANZ try and come in. <laughs> Why would you want to buy on Ethereum and then get it on Amex? Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Maybe they're just trying to get, you know, cross Oh, chain. that's amazing. <laughs> you can bridge something? What is that? Yes, oh, my exactly. Word. So, they're slowly catching on. Um, ANZ, I do, I, I do hate you, but... <laughs> Put it plain and simple. If anyone question? ever ANZ ever listens, I uh, hate you. What bank do you like? <laughs> yeah, no, no. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, nothing used to comes like to Silver mind. Bank. Maybe that was the only bank I would have liked. What <laughs> bank? Um, the crypto bank that went under. Ah, <laughs> uh, yeah, that's um, no, 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 Well, good. to end everything on a positive note, heading into the technicals, Bitcoin for the first time ever. Well, we've got so it's 31 days in March. Yes. I'm trying to look at William's laptop calendar. So after today, we've got five more days. Call it six because our monthly close operates on US time, mm, but mm. it's aiming for its first ever seventh month, seven month winning streak. So um, the I think the most months it's had winning was when we broke out in 2021, uh, 2020, 20. 20, yeah, into mm, 2021. Mm, mm, um, yep. We had that first top in March, just before COVID, if you remember, of 65K. I do. The six months leading up to that was six green pumping months, and mm. then we had the huge COVID drop, and then we re-pumped, obviously, again. But, um, you know, this... If we maintain, I think the I think the monthly close is sixty one. Sorry, monthly open. Uh, so monthly close for February was sixty one thousand one hundred dollars. So we've got five days to remain above that. Oof. Um, Jeez. What's the biggest monthly candle close that we've had? I reckon it was our most recent one, the sixty one thousand. Because I was going to say like because well, I think yeah. when we made all time highs, like we closed that month. Is well that below. We have two biggest monthly closes in a row. But if we finish above, I think so. We've definitely mm. had weekly. Like mm, our yeah. recent weekly candles have obviously been the biggest ones yeah, we've ever had. Seventy k. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, um, <clears throat> yeah, it's it's cool to see you know the seventh month in a row, and we've got the halving mm. next month. You know, they're still buying BlackRock. We're mm. still surviving the macro environment. So I don't know how long this winning streak goes on for. We obviously should have a pullback at some point. At the moment, um, as we move into technicals now, and I'll speak on it, is everyone is waiting for that pre-halving pullback. Um, I spoke at Do length you not on think the. We've already had it. Yeah, well, yeah. I spoke at length on this podcast about that negative twenty two percent pullback we yeah. had from the six one eight, and I spoke at length about how the amount of inflows that were coming through the ETF at that time in buying demand was still happening. That whole dump, so everyone else was dumping, they were still buying, and my notion there was that could have been your usual negative thirty to negative forty percent, and it's just been propped up. Yeah, yeah it's just been it's been neutralized by the buying demand of ETFs because they literally just got released then. Like, do you think now we've seen seen a somewhat similar sorry there you are. Uh, my brain was also uh-huh. clicking um a similar style arrangement where we've gone up and touched obviously and created new all-time highs and then pushed back down pretty much exactly 
almost what we yeah, touched yeah, before. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, somewhat, yeah. I think everyone's just getting confused because this time is not last time all the time you, before. Well, you've made not. all-time yeah. highs before the halving. That's never happened. Mm -hmm. And then everyone's going, well, oh, well we always get the pre-halving pullback. But yeah, we never made all-time highs pre-halving either. So you're, you're looking at fractals or times where the current price action you're trying to replicate isn't the same. Um, and like you said, like we dumped from $74,000 last week to $60,000. Yeah, like like people are like, oh, we're going to get... You just had a huge chance. Well, like, it was literally just Olds like got eight. slaughtered. Yeah, like, exactly. Everything uh, bled by like 10 to 20% easily. Arbitrum was $2.30 a couple yeah, of weeks ago. It was $1.30 last yeah, week. Yeah. And it's obviously like $1.70 now. But like, you know, there would have been people sitting there that watched Arbitrum go from $1.30 to $2.30 and gone, I'm going to wait for that negative 50% pullback. Negative, it pulled back 40% from there and mm -hmm. they just still wouldn't have bought. So yeah. um, I think if you're one of those people that sidelined, you just have to use the dips to dollar cost average. And we go yeah. over this so much in the Trading Academy, we go over it so much on the podcast, is trying to time the market I've been in this market a long time. I watch charts 18 hours a day. I'll time try and time know. trades on leverage, but spot buying, I don't ever nah, try and it's time. It's just not, like, not, we're not on a daily yeah, thing. Nah, You're looking yeah. at it from a long-term exactly. perspective. Exactly. And this, so yeah. to me, it's very simple. When Bitcoin was at $17,000, I didn't care if it dropped to $10,000. That just meant that I knew I would oh. be making more gains. I waited till it was like 16. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and, but I'm just saying, do you know what I mean? And it was yeah. the same with the Ethereum in everyone like I saw another person on Twitter bragging <laughs> about the 50k 3.5 thousand dollar Ethereum buy and oh, yeah. but anyways and it's just like I was buying Ethereum at $1,900 in 2022 I bought it at 1700 I bought mm -hmm. it at 1500 I then bought it at 1300 I then bought it at 1100 and I then bought it at 900 My average buy was $1,400 for mm -hmm. this cycle. Um, there are so many people that didn't bother doing that that would beg for a $1,400 FNG yeah. and they're trying to buy it at $3,500 now. I didn't time anything. I literally, from June of 2022 to November of 2022, did five to six separate F buys spaced yeah. one to two months apart. I got a $1,400 average buy and that's obviously a... You know, was it a 3x, you know, a, a week or two ago? And I assume, you know, in coming months, that'll be it a lot more. Um, so don't try and time the market. Um, when you see these large dips, don't try and time them either. Just have buy orders set. It's as simple as that. We mm. did that in the bear market, if you remember, because yeah, literally. I said to Pete, I said to, I know people can't, because these dumps happen, right? Um, the biggest example I can give is last year when we had that liquidation event from 30,000 to 23,000. And I had to quickly buy things for the trading academy that day. Mm. We bought FET from, for example, at like 17 cents, 18 cents yeah. on that day. Like every, I just had to be so quick. But the thing is, for those investors out there that had their long term time horizons that can't watch the market all day, buy orders are great because you just sit and forget. Walk you're away. so satisfied. Yeah. And literally, <laughs> I've had friends, I've literally had a mate that texted me, this was two to three weeks ago um, on WhatsApp. And he said, Oh, he texted me saying, Oh my God, Mitch, I just checked my Binance account. <laughs> I hadn't been on it in so long. Those buy orders you told me to set last year, I've just gone in and all my crypto was quadrupled. Yeah. Because he didn't even know his buy orders just hit in the bear market as he was just Bang. sitting there doing. And this is a guy not even interested in crypto. And he's probably outperformed like 90% of people I know. Yeah. Yeah. By not being involved in just dollar cost averaging with but buy that's orders. The, but isn't that just like the gate, the golden rule of what investing is is yeah. doing, being yeah. unemotional. Exactly, exactly. Right? And, and that's the whole point of what a buy order and is. And that's why done. to counter trade with psychology is so easily mm. easy in this market. I'm not going to get into that, but we do it a lot in the – that's why it's taught very heavily in the day trading group and community in that course is because counter trading emotions and psychology is so easy. I have yeah. no idea. Um, and, you know, the easiest example is – I made a bit of a joke about it on Twitter this morning. I said they asked for low 50s, they got given low 60s. And what I meant was, is like, when price is at 62,000, when it's at 63,000, it's come down from 73,000, 99% of people you see are saying we're going to 50,000. When, when we're at 60,000, because they don't want that negative 15% pullback to be the one, they want that negative 40, negative 30. Yeah. It's not happening in this market so far. Um, and you're getting caught with your pants pulled down and as opposed to, like you said, not being emotional and going, even if it was like you had dry powder to put in, right? At that point in time, 
it's way more reasonable to say, I'm going to put 50% in here at 60K. Yeah. I'm going to leave 50% for 50K just in case. Literally, that's that's the whole... We've now rallied to 71,000 and you'd be laughing because you're like, thank God I did that. But that if you didn't at all... That was the whole thing I sent you this morning. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah it was literally because yeah. I've just put in the 50% yeah, like yeah. the other day when it was 62 yeah. or whatever it yeah. is. And I was like, yeah, sweet, paydays in a few days. I'll just put in the rest <laughs> then. <laughs> yeah. Well, obviously missed out, but I still am happy. Yeah, exactly. So... Um, you know, yeah, it's another one thing I say to trading academy members because obviously I get a lot of new members that join, um, you know, so I can give some quick brief examples, but like we have Fandom at 22 cents, we have Solana at, you know, $25, Rune at $1.60, um, you know, all from just dollar cost averaging in the bear market. And I have, um, you know, new uh, new members that join and they say, you know, how do I approach this? And I just say, just dollar cost average. Yeah, I understand sure. you've seen it pump 5x i've given the explanations of the altcoin market at the moment which mm. we're mostly invested in and how far off the roof we're scratching mm. you know we're so we've got so long to go and i say you won't ever get angry if you just put initial amounts of capital in your dollar cost average from there yeah so even if someone had bought you know solana two weeks ago dumped to a hundred dollars if they'd been buying it at you know 120 130 and they said okay i'm going to set a buy order for 110 dollars yeah. just in case you get the pullback and i'm asleep blah, 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 and it's gone up to 150 they've woken up snagged a 110 dollar order and it's yeah. almost 200 dollars now yeah. and someone you know, a few weeks ago would have gone i'm not investing in solana it's the third biggest coin i'm not going to be able to double my X, money yeah. they've doubled their money in a few weeks on solana on the third know, biggest coin so um easy example is fandom i i actually use that as my example i think if you remember mm. the trading academy discord because we had a few members join and i said look here's one that hasn't pumped as much as soul rune whatever they are link mm. um fandom is currently 44 cents um we got in at 22 cents you know, a year and a half ago. You know, it's gone up, it's gone down. I would suggest to you guys, given my outlook on the Sonic release in a couple of months, yeah. what I believe in it as a tech uh, technology, uh, obviously there's Andre, there's everything going for it. Mm. I said, you know, I see, yes, it's 2x for you, but I see this, you know, minimum 5 to 10x, yeah. um, minimum. So put some capital in now. If we go lower, great. You might be able to grab it with us. But if you keep adding amounts, you know, you're going to be all right. And, you know, it's at $1.20 now. Um, that conversation was two to three weeks ago, I think. Yeah, exactly. Um, yeah. So just because something's in a top 50 coin or a top 20 coin doesn't mean, you know, you buy Bitcoin, you want to, it's the same thing. But Bitcoin's going to have yeah. less of a return than the others. There's just more... You know, safety and security and investing in something that's proven, isn't it? Um, yeah. But anyways, uh, I feel like we talked a lot then on not so much price action of what's happened, but at least the psychology around it. And hopefully yeah. a few people that are maybe sidelined or that, you know, are looking to enter have listened to this and kind of got a good idea. And obviously, you know, if this is something that interests you in learning further or you do need, you know, a bit of guidance or you want some market updates so you can figure out what levels to dollar cost average at, um, mm. you know, get in touch with Taylor or I. Tuck Trading Academy is a great place to start. And then if you're more into, obviously, the swing trading, day-to-day -day trading, you know, entering in um, and then exiting a few days later, a few weeks later, um, that's what we've got the day trading and leverage trading course for. So enough on the price action and the technicalities. Mining is quite brief this week. Yeah, brief. Everything's moving. And yeah. so at the moment, we're just seeing that obviously difficulty is commensurate to obviously what's happening price-wise. So it's a bit cloudy to put too much into it. Yeah. So there's not a huge brief. I think everything's pretty stable at the moment just because it's, it's commensurate to what's happening. Yeah. But obviously, you know, to be honest, the BTC market looks really good at the moment, obviously still stable returns, which is what you want when it comes to mining. When you look at alts, in all honesty, you usually see as much as they're really profitable right now, usually about eight to 12 months post halving once you start to see that bull run yeah that's when you get new machines and so purchasing old machines at the moment is not a hundred percent the best idea because you yeah. can get superseded yeah and so it's just i guess at the moment bitcoin's the way to go <laughs> there we go all righty well we're looking forward to that halving i'm actually going to see what if it is the 19th what so we think 18th or 19th yeah, I think it'll 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 slowly push down. It depends on where hash rate goes. Yeah, I know. Yeah, you know what I mean, it'll speed up a little bit because it was meant to be the twenty second about two weeks ago. Okay, um, I did look at it recently. and said nineteenth, so it is going up, I believe, or maybe. Oh. As I'm sorry, you, no, it should go down. So oh, it'll it's come going closer. the other way. Yeah, closer. Yeah. That's what I mean. Yeah, yeah. So it's twenty second when you look, nineteenth when I look. Yeah. So yeah, I would expect it. Yeah, I it might even be eighteenth now. Yeah, ten days after my birthday. That that's that's gonna be an that'll be a time. happy birthday. I mean, yeah. oh my god, wouldn't it be funny if it was on four twenty? Anyways, that's 
probably something not too many people understand. Probably you don't even understand, but uh, uh, anyway. not at all. Eh? <laughs> um, <laughs> I do have you. a question for you though to finish it off. Yes. All right, just out of pure curiosity, oh, and this God. is this is not, and you can't because you know, obviously end a podcast, so you can't go on. So it's a yes or no answer. Okay. Are we in a bull run? Yes. Hey, all right. Okay. Okay. Yes, we are. Another question: How long does the bull run last for? <laughs> Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I wanted to see if you forgot the rules. Oh, uh, that's funny. <laughs> um, all right. Thank you, everyone, for listening. Um, we'll be back next week. Beautiful. Thank you very Thanks, much. Thanks, guys.